Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Welcome. Uh, I got a couple things to talk about this time before we get to the box of the month. Uh, one is the train room. I wanted to show some uh, progress, what we've been doing in there. Uh, we did knock down a wall, tried to knock down part of another wall, but I uh, think I may need to get some help because I'm not sure if it's structural or not, and I don't want to you know, cause the building to fall down on our ears. So uh, anyway, but we have been working in there, uh, still haven't gotten the floor done, but I've been kind of trying to get the, some of the other stuff done first so that there are less things for the floor people to deal with when they come in. Another thing I wanted to talk about was my recent review of the Rapido NPCU. Uh, I was out rail fanning actually earlier today and just happened to catch that NPCU going by uh, from a place where I could see the roof. And it looks like it indeed does not have diamond plate on the roof. And also the AC unit that's on the real engine is different than the one that's on the model. So just wanted to throw those things in there because um, I wasn't sure I didn't have a good roof shot of it when I was doing the review, so I couldn't really talk about that. So it might have scored just a little lower if I had had that photo from today when I did the review, but uh, still overall pretty good model. So anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. And uh, now we can get to the box of the month and we got a little bit of a different format this month and uh, hope you'll enjoy it. So this month I have a special guest for Box of the Month, uh, Mike Armstrong of Coaster Fan 2105. And we were actually uh, out rail fanning today. That's when I saw the uh, uh, NPCU that I was talking about earlier. So uh, Yeah, anyway. we were up in Pinole and... Yeah, Pinole uh, and, and... Well, we briefly went to some, uh, Niles, Niles Canyon, Canyon yeah. afterwards, but uh, mo spent most of the day in Pinole. So we got a lot of Capitol Corridor trains and San Joaquin's and... Uh, the California Zephyr and one freight train. Um, and there were, there's actually two lines there. There's a Union Pacific line, which goes by the, the shore, which is kind of what we were shooting. And there's also a BNSF line very nearby, but unfortunately because of the way that everything's situated, couldn't get very good pictures of the BNSF line because the light was bad, basically all backlit and dark. So anyway. But there um, were six freight trains. There was a lot of freight trains. The most, most I've ever seen on that line. It's like usually when I go there, there's maybe you see one or two. This day, you know, today it was like six. So, you know, yeah, figures. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. But anyway, we got some good stuff anyway, and it was fun. It was nice, nice weather. So. Yeah, beautiful day. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to have Nicole dun, bring dun, in dun, the da, box. Da, here it comes. Here the box is. of the month. Have fun, guys. Okay. All right, we will. <laughs> All right, so you want to... All right, time to, to grab something out. Yeah. What do you want to start with? Uh, anything. So what's, is there anything special about this box? Well, this, this box is mostly actually uh, completed models. Okay. Um, most of the boxes that I've had on so far have been projects. Mm. Um, but this is mostly finished models that I've already worked on. So, Very cool. Um, yeah. I'm excited. Let's see. So this is a tunnel motor, Southern Pacific Atherin tunnel motor. And this is 8283. Mm. Look at that. How long have you had that one? Uh, I've had this a few years now, I guess. This one has been completely uh, detailed. It's got, I replaced the original fans with Canon fans. Um, did a lot of work on the, just everything really, That's uh, good. weathered it. It's got a low sound, uh, DCC and sound decoder, all new led lighting. And I redid the nose cause when it uh, came out of the box, it still had the, uh, 
S full SP light package and I'm since I mostly modeled the 90s I wanted it to look like it did in the 90s so I put a beacon on it which actually works um, and redid the front headlight because it had the uh, plated over cover where the uh, gyro light used to be mm. did the same thing on the rear got rid of the uh, extra lights and there's just a headlight on it now and there's there's all kinds of stuff I added a brake chain to the the truck on this side uh, there's just there's a lot of little stuff on this engine, but this one is all ready to go. When, Very cool. When I get my layout together, it will be ready. <laughs> <laughs> so to ready go. for the next one? Sure. Here we go. And this is another tunnel motor. This Ooh. is a Rio Grande. And this is that one, another completed one. Yes. This is another one. Pretty got much got the uh, same treatment. It's uh, this is Rio Grande 5371, which if you're familiar with the Rio Grande, this is the last tunnel motor that actually operated. Ooh. And this is the same thing, Canon fans. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, did a lot of weathering. Yeah, and uh, this one I actually added. Uh, the Rio Grande units had a lot of little uh, extra wires on the trucks, I think for some traction control thing they had or something, mm. I'm not sure. But I did that, I added this little, there was this little wire going around the fuel tank, or I don't know, maybe on the real one, it's a pipe of some kind, but I added that. Re-railing frogs, all kinds of stuff. Again, all LED lighting. Did some detailing on the pilots. So this but, is how the locomotive would have looked in the mid-90s then? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did, I think actually they took the, the nose gyro light off sometime between 1994 and 95. Okay. But I wanted to model mine with it, so I yeah. went with the 1994 look. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> so that's that one. Very cool. Great. Ready for the next one? Sure. Ah. Got, oh, I know this one. I've seen this one before. Yeah, this is sort of out of my era. This is an Atlas <laughs> uh, B40 8W. This is BNSF 557. Oh, that looks great. That I weathered and did some detailing on. And the, the reason I did this particular engine is I actually photographed this engine myself uh, running through Niles, or Fremont actually, the Niles, Niles District of Fremont in uh, 2008. It was on the Warm Springs local, right? Yeah. Mm. So I did some things like I, I repainted the AC unit orange to look like a, a swapped out AC uh, unit from another BNSF engine. Uh, basically just following my own photos and photos that I found online from this particular one. Um, I changed the snow plow, uh, again put in all my own lights, changed the windshield wipers to uh, better looking ones. Uh, the ones that came with the Atlas engine were a little bit thick, mm -hmm. kind of oversized. So did a lot of work on that one. So it's pretty, and it also has just about everything I have has look sound DCC and sound in it and LED lighting. It's just kind of my standard setup. So, um, but yeah, that's that is a very nice model. Thank you. Get back in the box without breaking it. <laughs> that's always a trick. Yes. Yeah, so this is not the best box, but I it works know. for you. Whatever works, right? Yeah. I think this is another one I've seen. Yeah, some of these may have, you know, appeared in video before, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> um, this is a Union Pacific B23-7. That's another Atlas unit. And Have you seen that one? No, this one I modeled from photographs. Um, and no, I didn't just cut the number from a decal sheet, um, <laughs> even though it's one, two, three. I, uh, I could have done that, but they would have been spaced too close together because the Union, Union Pacific engines that have a three-digit number, at least in, back in the 90s, they used to space them a little wider. So, um, you know, wanted to make it look like the photos. But again, I, I redid all the lighting. I re, uh, this was a, I think these are ex-Mopac units and the real ones. So I, mm -hmm. you know, put a new horn on it in a different location because the Mopac engines had the horn behind the cab, usually off to one side or the other and did a bunch of work to this one as well. Added the little 
uh, Union Pacific MU ho uh, cable holder mm -hmm. made out of a little piece of tubing. All kinds of stuff. That intricate work. Yeah, so. Did you have those grabs on the nose too? or I changed them because the okay. original, these, these grab irons right here, um, the ones that came with the engine were really oversized. Mm -hmm. And they looked kind of uh, just not so good. So I, I made some new ones out of wire that were finer. Wow, they look really good. Thank you. Bravo. So this was one that was, uh, I believe this was a painted but unnumbered unit. So I, I got some microscale decals to put the number on it. And it was already, you know, lettered Union Pacific and all that. Very good. On to the next one. On to the next one. And we have... Another tunnel motor. Another tunnel motor. Starting to get a theme here. Yeah. Could have run a whole freight train with just tunnel motors. That would be cool. Yeah. Like 10 tunnel motors and... <laughs> so this is another SP. Oh, that one has dish lights. Yeah, this is 8277. And again, modeled after photos that I found. Uh, somebody recently pointed out that I may have modeled the appearance of, as it appeared slightly after the UP merger instead of before. Mm. Um, What's the difference? Uh, they didn't have the 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 plated over uh, light covers. They had they had round. No, the covers. blanking plates. Yeah. The round blanking plates. Yeah, yeah. and um, also the it had a beacon. Mine mine doesn't have a beacon, so they they took that off. The thing is, is that you know I work from photos, but sometimes people don't date the photos right. Yeah, so, I've noticed that. Too. Yeah, as I had two photos of the engine in this appearance, and one was dated 1995, and one was dated 1996. But I'm pretty sure they were taken on the same day, because there was just a. It's almost like a, you know, he he took a picture and walked ten feet, and then took another picture, so it's just a slightly <laughs> different angle. So I think some yeah. somewhere somebody dated something wrong. Mm. But anyway, I don't I don't really care because I like it. It looks good to me. Yeah, it's pretty much got all the same stuff. I got you know. Took care, got rid of the rear light package as well and the rear class lights and all that. So at some time in the 90s, it looked like this. Whether it was before uh, 96 or after, I'm not sure. But it works for me. Well, there you go. Yeah. And on to the next one. Yeah. What do we have here? Well, if you guess tunnel motor. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. You win the jackpot. Yeah. Ooh. This is oh, that's a cotton, cotton belt. belt this time. Yes, 8375. And this one I actually modeled with its lights still on it um, because I found a picture of it, again, assuming the dates are right, um, still had its light package in the 90s. So that was good enough for me. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, I did change the color of those. This was one of the ones where the Either, I don't know if the paint had come off or they just didn't paint some of the the red emergency lights, but it was metal color instead of uh, painted. Probably a replaced part would be my guess. Yeah, something like that. Another thing I did with, with all of these SP tunnel motors, um, they came with the from Atherin with the L-shaped engineer's window, but by the 90s, most of them had lost that, and they'd been converted back to two two pieces. So... Rather than do surgery on the cab, I actually used a, uh, some decals to uh, put the post in where the, you know, because they, they, instead of having that big weird shaped piece of glass, I guess it was easier for them to put two smaller pieces. So they ended up with a post in there, but it was a slightly narrower post than the standard one. So anyway, I did that on all of these too. Wow. And I think it's got aftermarket plows on it. And, <laughs> You know, I've been my own uncoupling levers. They all have KD scale couplers, and pretty much, you know, done a lot of work to them. Little, you know, put details in the fuel tank area and stuff too. So, a lot of work in these things. Oh yeah, I, I can only imagine. Uh, well, what do we have this time? Not a tunnel motor. Oh. This is uh, another Athern. 
lot of atherin in this box. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that. Well, maybe we'll find something else in there. So this engine actually goes with the other BNSF engine we saw a few minutes ago. Um, this is a GP60M, and this one was also modeled from an engine I photographed that same day. In fact, they were running together as a consist, pulling a local. I, I think it was the Warm Springs local, like you said. Um, well, then you have to model the second one. Yeah, I had to model the second one. Um, they were running, the, the war bonnet was on the front going one way, and then later in the day it came back and this one was leading. So, well, there you go. Yeah. This one I did a lot of work on. Uh, I replaced the, this fan with a cannon part. Um, I actually added my own diamond plate tread on the, uh, the deck because it, it didn't have any, anything there and it looked kind of not so good. And I made new front and rear handrails because the original ones, when I was trying to put the ditch lights in and everything, it just kind of fell apart. Mm. And they were pretty flimsy, so I, I made new ones. I think these are the, yeah, those are the, still the original handrails on the sides. But I also uh, corrected the paint job because um, some of these BNSF units had the uh, green wrap around the back of the cab with the cigar band. And so I had to do that with decals and paint. And there's a lot of other little subtle things on this model that I did to change it. I added a lot of detail in the fuel tank area too, like some aftermarket air reservoirs and fuel gauges and brake lines and things like that. Cause there just wasn't, these uh, Atherin GP60Ms were a little bit sparse looking out of the box. I guess you could say they didn't have a lot mm -hmm. of detail. So anyway, that one is, now fully ready to go to work on, even though it's not really from the nineties, uh, I'll use it somewhere. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like that one. There's another one. This is another Atherin. But this is not a tunnel motor either. No. <laughs> this is an Amtrak engine, P40, number 814. Um, this one I pretty much detailed with the, uh, Details West makes a kit for these, which mm -hmm. has a bunch of parts. Most of it is on the underside, uh, a lot of plumbing and these little uh, air filters and things like that that they give you. And I put, put all that stuff on it and uh, well, that looks excellent. Thank you. I have an aftermarket horn. I also, um, you could see right into the mechanism from the windows. So one of mm -hmm. the things I did was build a kind of a cab interior for it. It's very rudimentary. It's just a couple of pieces of sheet styrene. There's no seats or anything, but it, uh, I painted it dark. Uh, I think it's black in there. So at least it, you can't see through it. Mm -hmm. So it, it gives a better impression. Uh, I changed the windshield wipers to aftermarket ones. All the lighting is with LEDs. Um, I also put, again, low sound decoder. And this one actually has a really big speaker in it, so it sounds pretty good. Um, the speaker enclosure is basically this entire back area <laughs> right here. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's because it's got such an, a large body. So anyway, I've got another one of these somewhere, but we'll see. I don't know if it's in this box. Cool. But, and get the next one again. Very good. Well, let's uh, let's continue with the Amtrak theme. Shall okay. We? Oh, this is, how'd this get in there? I don't know. Uh, this is not finished. Oh but, well. But that's okay. That's okay. This is a Kato uh, F40 PH number 400, and it's pretty much stock. I haven't really done anything with this model yet. Looks like you put the number boards in. Or did yeah, it come like that? I don't, you know, I've had this thing for so long, I don't remember if it came with them already installed or mm. if I did that. But anyway, um, yeah, that's, that's an F40 pH. Huh? Number 400. <laughs> yeah, number 400. Huh, funny, funny. I, I, uh, I also have an interesting surprise here today. Do you? Yeah. Let's take well, a look, what, shall what we? What would that be? This is the horn from the real Amtrak number 400. That's not going to fit on there. No, we'll have to scale it down <laughs> <Yeah>. somehow. <laughs> so, 
I think it's too big. <laughs> I, I think it is. So what, what are we going to do about that? Yeah. So tell us about that. Yeah. What so, is this? so anyway, this is called a Nathan K5LA. You have one, two, three, four, five chimes on a low manifold. Um, this is the common horn that's used by Amtrak. This particular one was built in the mid '90s and was put on the the real 400 in about 2000, 2001, sometime right right before it was retired from service. Okay. So this is a replacement horn. They they ordered. Oh, so it's not even accurate for my era. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, it was built in the 90s. Oh, okay, well, that's, that's, that's true. Sorry, so no, continue. Anyway. <laughs> So it's uh, these they run in compressed air, yes? yeah? Yeah, yeah. So this one, um, you'll, you'll get a noise out of it for just um, probably about 50 psi, but. Usually, to get the full sound, you want to hear them at about 120, 140 pounds per square inch. Okay. That would be a good thing to do late at night. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, it's not. If you Don't want to annoy that. a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I did not say that. Don't, we, no. we don't. We do not condone that. We don't endorse that. No. So do not do that. No, don't do that, please. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, very cool. Very That's cool. really neat. I don't think I've ever seen a real train horn. Uh, especially not in my living room. Before. Yeah, well, well, this there's a first. The first for everything, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the box. Back to the box. All right. What else is in there? Before? We have just a couple more. Okay. Oh, okay. Looks like another a atlas. Of one of the other ones I've seen. Yeah, this is another Union Pacific. B23-7, this is number 158, and this is very similar to the other one. Um, main difference visually is that the horn is on this side instead of that side. But again, just following prototype photos. Um, I believe this is also an XMO pack unit. So uh, these are pretty basic. Um, they didn't have a lot of like extra stuff or lights or anything on them. But I did uh, redo everything with uh, LED lights, just like these Atlas engines that I, I like to do is to separate the number board lighting from the headlight. Because the way they come from the factory, um, if you turn it on, it all lights up at the same time. So I like to have it independent so I can run the headlight separately from the number boards or just have the number boards on but not the headlight, mm -hmm. which I think looks really good when the engine's parked somewhere. Um, so I, 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 you know, fiddle with the uh, stuff inside it until I can make it do that. So anyway, and again, aftermarket wipers and I changed the grab irons on this one too. So lots of little, little subtle changes. It's, it's pretty, I mean, these are pretty good out of the box, but you know, just a, a few extra details, they look, just look a little more, more realistic. And well, that one looks really good. Thank you. Oh. What else we got? All right, ready for the last one? Yes. Here we go. The last one. Oh, this one's interesting. Another atherin. <laughs> A lot of them in that box. A lot of atherin in this box. This is an SW1500 in Western Pacific colors. Or 1502. I think WP had three of these. Um, these don't really fit my era, but I just like WP, so I have a few WP engines. Oh, I mean, they're so cool. Yeah, they are. I would like the paint scheme, and uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to see much real WP, so, um, you know, it's kind of cool to have the models, but uh, one of the, I, I did a bunch of work to this one. I know it probably looks pretty stock, but again, I redid all the lights, and I made the uh, class lights work. Um, I also did a lot of work on the pilots because I think it came with footboards and I wanted it to model as it looked after the footboards had been taken off. So I did a lot of surgery in the, in the pilot area to change that and I think I had to repaint it and redecal the, the little stripes on there. Did that on both ends. But these are pretty nice. These are the, the newer Athern uh, SW1500s. They've got the photo etched 
uh, you know, radiator screens and they've got a cab interior. So, you know, again, a pretty nice model out of the box. I also put the um, uh, Canon diamond plate tread kit on it. So you can't really see that from on camera probably, but it looks, looks pretty good. So, you know, again, just adding a few things, giving it some weathering makes it look, you know, more realistic than it just would out of the box. So very cool. Anyway, and all of those except for the Amtrak 400 are all ready to go. So just need to build that layout. <laughs> well, but that's well, the next uh, step, right? Yeah, yeah. Got to get the room ready first. I want to do it right and have the room completely done, and then then we'll start building bench work and doing all that fun stuff. So, Very cool. So, anyway, uh, thank you, Mike, for being on the show. Well, thanks for inviting me. Sure. And uh, that's it for this time. We'll see you next time. See ya. Thanks for watching. Thanks.